So kind of want to bring up a issue that we're starting to see become very, very popular. It's becoming a problem. It's disrupting nations. It's disrupting companies. And, and that's drones kind of, you know, in London, um, a few months back, a drone was able to breach kind of the, what is it? The one kilometer range around an airport and fly at an altitude that um, can cause, can threaten lives. Right. Um, is, is, is hacking drones or having the technology to disable a drone remotely is, is that the right approach? Because no one really seems to have a solution to solve the drone issue uh, other than making it illegal. I mean, right. Dubai had an issue. I think it was uh, – so so Dubai International Airport, which is one of the busiest airports in the world, sure. they run on two runways. There's nowhere for them to expand because of the vicinity of the airport. Right. Um, I, I was I – was, I, I traveled a lot to Dubai. I know what it's like. I was uh, – when, when one of those runway gets shut down – in fact, um, a few years ago, in, in, in the, uh, August of uh, 2016, 2015 or 2016, I don't know if you recall, a 777 crash landed and was on fire. No one died from it. Yeah. It was coming from India and Emirates, but it shut down one, one runway, and so they had to delay all the flights because they only have two runways. Right. Um, but you think of a drone just breaching, keeping those planes circling a lot of uh, emirates flights are long distance and so these planes are running on fumes at one point or another mm -hmm. is, is is hacking drones is, is that the line of security you look for is that a problem i mean it's a problem we need to solve right sure and individual responsibility unfortunately hasn't done the job yet um, here at ung we have dozens of drones across a number of departments our physics team our computer science even our psychology departments have drones um, but it's, uh, we have all of our faculty that use the drones go through training uh, from the FAA. They all have their, their certificates so that they know that they're only supposed to fly it up to 400 feet. We don't even go near 500 feet uh, for our drones. Uh, we keep everything close to campus for the most part, but even on our drill field here in the center of campus, this beautiful drill field we have that uh, frames the Dahlonega campus, we have hel helicopters land on a regular basis. So we need to know um, what, uh, what kind of plans our, our faculty have for using the drones just in case we have an Apache landing on the drill field for that day. Does that happen a lot? Uh, we do, actually, uh, because of our uh, work with the, uh, not just the National Guard, but the U.S. Army and the Ranger Camp. We are very fortunate to have helicopters land. It's great to take a picture with a big black helicopter right behind you. It's, it's a lot of fun, so our students enjoy that. Uh, but uh, we, we take drone uh, flight very seriously uh, for our faculty, for our students. We make sure that they've got training before they use them even around our campus. Um, you asked about hacking drones. I think for a lot of police departments, a lot of airports, uh, the ability to use radio frequencies and disrupt a drone that's where it's not supposed to be is going to be one of the last lines of defense. It does need to be a last line, of course. We don't. Uh, it doesn't need to be the first line, right? But uh, it should personal be. responsibility should be the first line. But uh, police, airports, uh, public safety workers—they're going to need the ability to shut those devices down if they're flying, especially if they're uh, in, endangering civilians. Well, as someone who's you know was trained to think like a bad guy would, mm -hmm. I mean, you think of drone. It's the cheapest way to cause most mass damage. I mean. Absolutely. Um, if we go back to 9-11, terrorists used airplanes as a way to disrupt our country and launch an attack on our nation, right. an attack that changed the way our nation handled things going forward. Absolutely. If you think of drones, so drones are a great advancement for a lot of businesses, for surveys. It has unbelievable benefits to the small to the large business. You're able to map That's things right. out at a fraction of the cost of what it used to cost to fly a you know, a Cessna or a, you know, or a Piper with mm -hmm. all the photographers and all the equipment. So now you can put HD cameras on drones and sensors and you can fly around and you can survey it. You can watch it in real life. You don't have to wait mm -hmm. for the editing for all these different things. And, um, you know, taking a drone with, you know, five pounds of explosives, flying it close to an airplane coming at landing, which is essentially that's when it's at its softest targets at takeoff and landing. Because at cruising altitude, I mean, we, we've we seen, you know, the underwear bomber and a few others try to take a plane at cruising altitude, and they couldn't. Just right. the amount of explosives at, at, at five, you know, whatever it was that they were using at the time, 
you know, wasn't enough to really cause the amount of damage they thought they could. And I think they didn't get figure in cabin pressure and so many other things. And so, sure. I mean, that had a part of it. But when you think of drones, you put five pounds of, you know, explosives on drones, fly close to an airplane coming to land, take it down. There's no way for the pilot to correct or at takeoff the, the plane isn't going fast enough right. to recover. Well, that's one of the reasons we think it's important for our students to be exposed to drones. Uh, we use drones even in that high school program I was telling you about. Oh, wow. The students fly uh, little mini drones. In fact, I've got one of them sitting right there. Oh, very that, cool. Uh, so they fly a little eight-ounce drone around an obstacle course in our uh, gymnasium. So they get a chance to program the drone to fly through a hoop and then move, go to a different altitude, go through a different hoop, and then land in a box, um, you know, further down the uh, the court. And um, even at the high school level, we want them to think of computing, think of cyber as bigger than laptops and desktops. We know about the Internet of Things, whether that's a drone, whether that's uh, your automobile, whether it's the controls in your building. Um, we want the students to be exposed to a wider variety of technology. But especially for our students who go into the military, those drones are really important. Uh, well, that's the future of our Air Force. I mean, absolutely. When you look at the Air Force strategy papers that have been written over the last decade right. or so, I mean, flying drones is cheaper, it's safer, and it allows us more maneuverability than having an airman fly a plane. Although we still, let's not get it twisted, we still have the F-22s and F-35s, absolutely. beautiful pilots machines. Are still very important. Pilots are still very important. And we have pilots running a lot of those systems on the ground. But right. the unmanned aerial systems uh, do offer a lot of protection, not just for our men and women, but men and women around the world. Right. And and it, it has a benefit, but the, the threat on travel alone right. by drones is, 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 is crazy, and I hope that... And just the disruption that they can cause in a city. I was in San Francisco not too long ago visiting my publisher, and a drone flew up over an overpass. We were uh, maybe 75, 100 feet in the air, and a drone flew within 10 feet of the roof of our Uber that we were riding in. And um, as, as a person who takes responsible drone flying pretty seriously, it was a little unnerving to think that somebody's just flying right over the interstate there. Uh, just a simple traffic accident can snarl traffic um, in the well, U.S. pretty I, easily. I don't think people realize how much damage a drone does yep. when they think of like a 16-ounce drone or a two-pound drone, right. right? They go, well, what, what's it going to do to a big commercial jetliner? And I go, people don't realize that. I mean, I think it was the Oklahoma Thunder, the basketball team, the NBA team, that their plane hit a drone mm. um, midair, and the front end where the radar is for the airplane was bent in, and it looked like Superman gave it uh, uh, boxed it down um, there's pictures of that all over on uh, online it was a story that night um, and then it kind of disappeared because they didn't really know the reason but it was a drone impact it was later it was mm. later put out that the um, a drone was flying within um, range the pilots obviously didn't see it as it was coming up and yeah. and the and the radars on the planes aren't sophisticated enough to recognize something as small as a drone yep but even uh, whether it's a distraction or whether it's a material obstacle, if it actually gets in the way of the plane, um, whether it's an automobile or a plane, uh, a drone can cause a lot of damage. Uh, so I think that you're right uh, to bring it back to hacking. I think we will have to have RF technologies, radio frequency technologies, as well as some advanced targeted hacking skills to uh, shut down drones when they're places they shouldn't be. So really cool video that everyone can watch on YouTube. Uh, Micah, we should find it and post it on our on our page for this podcast, is the um, Emirati's um, Army, Air Force, sorry, shooting a drone with a weapon over Dubai Airport. Wow. Um, so, so they deployed a, um, a, a helicopter with a machine gun with, a, I think it was an M50 or mm -hmm. uh, a, a, an M40 uh, caliber rifle mm -hmm. and shred it to pieces over the airport Wow! Um, as it was flying over the because it disrupted air travel and um, they couldn't triangulate the signal from where it was being being run so they they, they, they got rid of it um, mm -hmm. they shot it out the sky and so that's really cool